Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and we're back with another Pathfinder Bytes where I try to tell you about one of the classes in Pathfinder 2nd Edition in under 10 minutes. So let's get started. For today we're going to be talking about the monk. So, what is a monk? The monk is the ultimate unbound and untethered character in the game. They have the most mobility options of any of the other classes, and not only that, but there's some of the least gear dependent, getting up to legendary proficiency in their unarmored defense, which we'll mention about a bit here in a little bit, as well as their lack of need to purchase any magical weapons. Granted, they still do need magic items. Again, something we'll mention in a little bit later. They are the master of physical acts, getting so much in their kit that allows them to manipulate their enemies, whether it's tripping or whether it's even running up walls and all kinds of things. Monks, even without too much proficiency in things like acrobatics or athletics, do get a lot of abilities that give them superhuman abilities. And also, this is, I think, a feature of many classes, but I think it most specifically to the monk. There's so many choices that it feels like you just don't get enough feats to get exactly the kind of character you want, which is a good problem to have, but it does indeed make the monk feel a little bit stressed when it comes to getting everything in their kit, as a lot of it is really good and you want so much, but you only get so many feat choices, which, again, not a bad problem per se, but still a part of the class. Now that we talked about what is a monk, what makes the monk? What makes the monk the ultimate unbound kind of fighter character? Well, they are they make their bodies into the ultimate weapon. They are a master of unarmed strikes, getting up to master proficiency, but not legendary, which a lot of people really have a lot of issue with. As they are the unarmed class, they should get legendary, right? Well, no, because the thing with the monk is a lot of the features they get with unarmed strikes and other abilities makes up for that difference. Not only that, but you get a feature called a flurry of blows, which is a feature that you can pick up through multi-classing, but you have to go quite a ways into the multi-class to actually pick it up. What flurry of blows does is allows you for one action to make two strikes. And if both strikes hit, you actually combine the damage for the purposes of negating resistances on the enemy. This makes the monk very proficient at using unarmed abilities and strikes and have a potentially the most strikes of an, any other unarmed fighter. Granted, that's not even the best part. The best part is their strikes become upgraded. As you level up the monk, no matter what feats you take, your fists will eventually be able to do all kinds of different types of material damage, whether it's iron, or silver, or magical, or adamantine, your fists will count against breaking down the resistances of enemies, meaning you don't need to invest in costly material weapons, and your wep your fists will have the properties of many different materials. This makes you into the ultimate weapon where your fists are pretty much effective in every situation. Now, I did mention the lack of mastery in unarmed strikes, but let's talk about their legendary proficiency in unarmored defense. This allows them, granted, not as much as the champion as the heavy armor does give them a little bit of an edge when it comes to defenses, but due to their higher than normal proficiency in defense, monks are the best unarmored class in the game, meaning they don't even need to invest in costly items like magic armors or the like. And on top of that, as long as you're putting your decks up pretty high, you're going to be pretty untouchable. So this blends together with your stances. Oh, I didn't even mention stances. Stances are another feature of the monk I really want to mention where you can actually manipulate your unarmed strikes to do different things, whether it's increasing the damage or giving your strikes unique traits like the trip trait or the shove trait, which makes it easier for you to shove and trip enemies. Granted, in order to get the most benefit from these kinds of stances, you're going to want to invest in hand wraps of mighty blows as this gives you an item bonus to any of those kind of actions as long as the stance gives you that trait, which makes monks really good at tripping or shoving or grappling enemies as a lot of their stands do give them this ability. Now, everything all mixed together, their high defense and their high proficiency in stances and the like 
makes them unparalleled in unarmed combat. Fighter, yes, arguably can become legendary in unarmed strikes, but your legendary proficiency would balance it out anyway in defense. As, you know, the bonus they would get to hit you, you would get a bonus in defense that counters it. And they don't get the same bonus, so your hits are hitting them just as much, and your hits are probably hitting them for more, and also your hits are doing different material damage. And also, did I mention at like level 19, you get perfected strikes where your first strike in a round just automatically rolls a 10 or, or higher? Like, you can't roll below a 10. You can botch your first strike, and it still counts as being a 10. You cannot crit fail your first strike in a round. This makes monks unparalleled in unarmed combat. And it doesn't step on the fighter's toes of their legendary proficiency weapons, as that's kind of all fighter really gets. And not only that, but with certain feats, monks can also incorporate certain monk weapons into their uh, fighting styles, giving them the same proficiencies with those weapons. So making them prof or legendary proficient and unarmed just doesn't make sense and will would literally step all over the toes of fighters. So I think they hit a really good blend with monks. And I didn't even talk about one of the most unique features when it comes to talking about the monk, which is their key features. Now, your monk does not even need to actually invest in any key abilities. Key abilities are focus spells that you get as a monk that enhance your abilities. Key strike or key rush, I think, are one of the first two you need to get in order to pick up later key abilities. Key strike is just a extra die of damage on a strike for a focus point. Doesn't seem like a lot, but I think it's actually all in one maneuver or all of your strikes, meaning that the monk can do a lot of damage with flurry of blows with key strike. Oh, it's uh, your next strike or flurry of blows. That's what it was. So yeah, you can do a lot of damage with that extra damage or the extra damage die, and it does heighten with you as well, doing even more damage, making a essentially a better power strike at the cost of keep. They also get other key abilities, and even the abilities to do elemental damage are count as key abilities as well. Granted, not all of them using focus points. And even unique stances that require the use of a focus point to get into, but after you're in the stance, you no longer need to maintain it using focus points, which is really cool. Monk just makes you the ultimate weapon, but here are some tips that might help you on your journey if you want to go down the path of the monk. First and foremost, do not ignore your mobility abilities in monk. One of the best features of Monk are the sheer amount of feats in their class list dedicated to mo mobility, whether it's running across water, up walls, all that kind of stuff. Not only that, but they get an innate class bonus to their speed as long as they are unarmored, meaning that they are just one of the fastest, most agile classes in the game. It behooves you to pick up one or two feats because this is going to allow you to get to places that your allies are not going to be able to get to as easily. Running up a tower to hit an archer, just run up the wall while everyone else has to take the stairs. And stairs give you, uh, are counted as difficult terrain, which you can just ignore. So you would get there in more than, you know, twice as fast as everyone else and deal with the archers. So it is very important that you do not neglect your class's innate mobility if you're playing a monk. Flurry of Blows is not let me attack more in a combat round. That's not what it's for. What it's for is it allows you to set up, maneuver, and do whatever you need before your strikes come out. The benefit of the monk is they essentially get two actions to move, feint, do whatever to their enemy before making a strike, which is very good and very important because it allows you to essentially have higher mobility, like I mentioned before, but also to do things like feinting as a part of a two-strike action, which is really good. I actually really do enjoy the monk purely for the fact that their kit allows you for so much more wiggle room on your turn. You feel like you do so much on your turn as a monk, thanks to Flurry of Blows. But that's going to be it for me on this video. Hope you all liked it. Hopefully I kept it under the time. And please let me know what you think of monks down below in the comments. And if you could leave a subscribe on the way down, then I'd appreciate it. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.